My name is Peter Blauner, VMD. I am a veterinarian. I have been in practice since 1981. From the time I was 12 years old, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a veterinarian. You're supposed to give me a little trouble this morning. Did you break my machine? No. We have evidence, actually, today. <laughs> Joanne has been my right arm for over 15 years. She's my longest standing employee and associate. There was a calling, I guess you call it. Even as a kid, I didn't know what a calling was, but I knew that before I even went to kindergarten. I just had this fascination with animals, especially horses. Our job is in the field, so we have an ambulatory vehicle, and we drive to the patient. We go from farm to farm to farm to farm, and we provide the care at stall side. So this is essentially my office. So here, let me clean off the desk. This is it, we are in this truck sometimes, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. A typical situation would be we try and meet at the practice in the morning, which is around between 7.30 and 8, and talk about, well, how'd you do yesterday? Is anybody, you know, needing help today? Where are you heading? Who's on call? Let's get all that organized. So, what on the agenda? I'm gonna have power um, flow Linus Marciano. He had that horrible wow. carrot choke wow. a couple of months back wow. where he swallowed the whole carrot and then he had all that pharyngeal cellulitis. So he has really atrocious teeth and we're finally gonna get around. You're gonna power flow him. Anna is our youngest associate and probably like most younger people has uh, maybe more confidence than she should have. She's a little on the brash side and bold side and most of the time, thank God, she gets away with it. But um, I think she'll develop into a wonderful veterinarian given a few more seasons. She's very brave, courageous, willing, get out there, take it on, focused, determined. A weakness in that would be too much too soon. Be careful, there's a lot you're responsible for. It's gonna be a long road. Take it one step at a time. Thin. We gotta fatten you up a little bit before winter comes. Dr. Jen's uh, greatest strength, in my opinion, is she has great patience and fortitude with clients that I don't. Uh, Jen is possibly too much of what I would call a bleeding heart, but Jen gets very involved in her cases. Uh, and not that that's a bad thing, but it can cloud your decision-making process sometimes. Sure. Jen needs a little pep talk okay. before every time we yeah. <laughs> Get, there's your pep talk. That's an Italian pep talk. But we're constantly telling her, Jen, you kick butt at this. This is your thing. Get out there and present yourself as um, the one. Because we believe it, you need to believe it. Hey, what's going on here? So, the old man, Carlin King, can't breathe. Oh. He has chronic allergies really, really bad. Liz is very focused, very aggressive, very competitive. What, what Olympics was he in? He was in the Athens Olympics in 2004. He got tied for fourth place. He's a hero in Ireland, this horse. Even though we all work several hours, I think she's maybe a workaholic. She doesn't know the word no. There is a point where you need to say enough or no, that's not working for me. Taking on too much and getting overwhelmed, inundated, and uh, tired. I think she's doing a very good job with her practice. I think her life is in a bit more turmoil than her professional life, and I just would encourage her to stabilize that. What do you mean you're behind me? Like, did you not, like, lecture me about being on time, Dr. Buchholz? I'm just sharing. Okay. So get it. your ass over to Gwen Meadows. We're gonna actually head over to a farm, uh, meet up with Dr. Jen, um, and help her take out an eye, which is gonna be really awesome. <laughs> Our fee. It is physical, that's for sure. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah. Um, Look, that's what somebody who goes fishing does. Here was here, what we yeah. call it? Physical. <laughs> He has a <laughs> 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 purpose bulbar. 
<laughs> I love all this ophthalmology. Like, we'll say it again. I would say it's physical. But if I were Peter, I would That's say physical. <laughs> it's the only Y chromosome in the room. Um, it's a way of life, I have to say, because this business is predominantly women in the field these days. Now's the time you hope you haven't had too much coffee during the day. It's just in the right place. Yeah, right well, this guy was hiding, I guess, down I in the ventral abdomen, and then... The timing of yeah, Jen's good, good children has been a little difficult in the sense that both of her kids were born in the middle of our busiest season, and I've always thought if one could time such things, um, the slow season would be the time to deliver a baby, but, you know, I think it's a little out of my jurisdiction to make these recommendations. Peter is kind of my way or the highway. I hear what you say, but I'm not really hearing it. What the hell? Yeah, well, exactly. You can drop this poor mare with a digital pressure there, too. This left mare went, it's left this left? one right here. Though they may think I'm pulling back, I actually do far more work than any of them. Okay. They just don't see it. Though I might not be administering their cases and that sort of thing, but I'm certainly working um, far more hours than probably any of them. She doesn't need to be on a whole tube every day. Let's put her on a half a tube a day. Let's see. You better today? Oh, all right, take your time. Unlike in human medicine, we have financial constraints. So this brings up a whole nother aspect of veterinary medicine compared to human medicine. This horse could be fixed, it could be sent to university, it could have surgery. Unfortunately, it's very expensive, and there's a potential here that the cost of the surgery exceeds the value of the horse to the owner. are the best. I mean, they can be the best of your day or the worst of your day. And you're a captive audience, so you go there to look at a horse, but really they just okay. want to talk to you about their divorce or their kid troubles. But I think they depend on us for so much more than just being the veterinarian. It's like you're this multi-hat person, you know? And sometimes it's just the best part of your day. Do you want a cookie? Good girl. And other times you're just like, Get me out of here. <laughs> I'd like you to determine if my one chicken. baby chick is it a rooster or a hen. A uh, chicken? Are you serious? This little one here with the red comb. Do you think that's a rooster, the rooster? That one. It is a very difficult job. I have a fractured collarbone. I had two plates in my wrist. Um, I'm missing a few teeth. I have some spare parts in my knee from a new ACL. He spun so fast that I didn't even know what was happening and he kicked me with both hind legs in my face. He fractured my jaw and knocked out four of my upper teeth. It is so easy to get hurt. You know, veterinarians get killed because they get kicked in the head or they're working on a dangerous animal or the owners can't restrain the animal. We've all gotten injured and kicked and bitten and I got knocked out. These are things that happen when you work with 1,200 pound animals that are poorly trained and generally uncooperative. I wouldn't give up this for anything. It's like the people, the horses, the stories. I've known some of these people through having their children and now their children are riding. So I just love all that kind of stuff. The most enjoyable part of this uh, process to me is when you can take a horse that's been injured, sick, lame, and you can make it a sound and happy and functional individual. There's no greater satisfaction than that. I mean, really happy with the people I work with. Uh, I think they're very talented, and we all have great ideas and look forward to that future and working hard and making a difference.